G'day folks, Jason here in the Otter Farm. We're actually on the Otter Farm property this morning, guys. What the topic of discussion today is gonna to be bale grazing or bale unrolling and feeding your livestock on the ground compared to that of if it was in a hay rack or, or a feed rack. So we'll jump on this tractor, guys, and we'll put a spike in this hay and we'll get the hay down to where I, where I require it. And then whilst I'm down there, I'll go through 10 advantages of bale grazing or rolling the hay out on the ground and then I'll cover the advantages or disadvantages I might say to the if you're going to feed out of a hay rack in comparison So we've made it to the location now guys. I'll cover the first point, and that is putting the seed back on the ground. So the reason you want to do that is to thicken up your pastures, to have it germinate, and that's number one advantage. So the first thing you do when you come to the location where you want to put the bale down, is look for the worst area of pasture in your paddock, whether it be bare soil, or whether it be poor pasture. That's optimally the best place you want to put it, because then you can really take advantage of the seeds that are in the bale to germinate and thicken up that poor area of the paddock. So I'll have a quick look guys before I put this bale down. The reason I picked this area here is I've got a poor area through here. So I've got roads grass there, which I done a sabbatical on yesterday and there. But in between this whole zone here is weeds and cooch grass. So there's nothing really of substantial in there. See this paddock, well this property has been neglected before I got previous owners on it before that. They continue to graze the whole lot. There's no maintenance. There's no matter on the ground, organic material. I'm slowly building it back up. The only time you forget to bring your knife. Make sure you spread that out evenly, guys. That way you're getting good coverage on the ground. You break it up. So what I'll do is I'll cover the second point of the advantage of bale grazing. So what I'm doing now, apart from the dog trying to sleep on it, the advantage here is I'm putting it on the worst area. So whether it be bare ground or whether it be poor pasture, the reason you want to do that is when it rains, the velocity of the raindrops is the worst compaction you can get on the ground. If it was bare dirt, this is close to bare dirt, so the grain comes down, hits that dirt that hard. If you see slow-mo videos of raindrops, it's just like a small explosion. Dirt goes everywhere. And the same here, there's, you know, there's not much dirt here. We've done areas, there's not much grass here, sorry. So it's a very thin layer where the rain hits and it's not slowing that velocity down. Yesterday we done a bare ground up the top of the paddock where we'd cleared a burn pot with bare dirt. Had it rained there, it would have washed that topsoil away. So what you're doing here, 
when you're spreading over the poor area of bare dirt, you're slowing down that velocity of the rain. So it hits the grass, then it seeps through, and then it runs across and seeps into your ground. So you haven't got that impact on the ground. So the third reason is closely related to that second reason, it's got to do with rain. Because there's no armour on the soil in this area, it's just a thin layer of cooch, lucky to be 10 mil. This is adding that extra layer of armour on the soil. And when you've got armour on the soil, when it rains, the sun can't penetrate through and pull the moisture out. So you're holding the moisture in the ground longer which is beneficial because then in the hotter months you've got moisture there to grow the grass back faster. Get out, Butchie. Get out, mate. Up, off. Get out, mate. Get out, mate. Then there's, we're going on to the fourth reason. The fourth reason is, and this is where a lot of old timers or old school continuous grazers who use a lot of feed rings or, or feed dispensers or hay racks can't get their head around. So they say there's a lot of wastage. Yes, I must admit, there probably won't be too much wasting here because I'm not cell grazing here on the other farm like the trial property, I don't move them on. So they'll know they'll come back in the next week or so and polish, I'd say 95% of this up but I've still got that seed bank going through. The idea is when I start cell grazing, I'll give them a day, whatever's left, it's staying here. So the fourth point is that wastage, which is not wastage, is building new back. Over time it decays. And when it decays, you're building back fresh topsoil. So because over the years of neglect, this is compact, continual graze, rain velocity, it's really compact. When you've got fresh topsoil, it's light and fluffy which means the roots of any pasture that come through can penetrate and also the microorganisms and worms come up and do their thing and aerate that soil, then the water can go in and hold longer too. So building that fresh pot soil up, which is beneficial for pasture growth, gets that root deeper into the ground and allows the plant to grow higher and thicker. So it's not a waste, it's building back the topsoil for which is years and years, not only Australia, all across the world has been neglected. And that's why global warming also is because the earth's warming up. You're not leaving those two thirds of that plant. This, putting fresh topsoil, will help thicken the pasture. The root system will go deeper. The plants will grow higher. So it's win-win all round. Which brings me to number five. Number five would, because obviously you've got the layer of thatch now and you've got the decaying matter on the ground, it actually keeps the ground cooler. So by keeping the ground cooler, you're keeping the moisture in longer and you're also keeping the microbiology and all the soil life happy underneath. Because if your surface of your ground is hot, the soil life won't be able to survive. Come summer here, and you know, it gets like 38, t touches 40 here in Queensland, Australia, degrees Celsius. So it gets really hot. No micro, no microbiology or any biology or microbes or any matter, whether it be worms or any, can sustain life at that temperature. So it keeps the ground cooler, and then you've got the, the microbiology in the ground working for you. Which now brings me on to number six reason for bale grazing and putting it on the ground. We spoke about the microbiology. As this decays, we spoke about it keeping it cooler. The sixth reason is you're giving the microbiology and the soil life, the matter, something to eat. Because as this breaks down, it feeds the microbiology. have got something to feed off. They've got a fresh pasture which is breaking down. It's decaying matter which they feed off. 
Then you get the mycorrhizal fungi, you've got everything going on because you've kept it cool. You've got microbiology taking it to the ground. They're using this for feed themselves and the, man and the manure, which is another topic. So it's beneficial for the insects. Without this, the ground's hot, they've got nothing to eat. So it's a food source for the biology in the ground. So as myself and Butchie are demonstrating here, it's great for bedding. And on a winter's night we come out and you see the, the cattle have good feed, they're full, five, five stomachs are full, the rumen's doing the job, then they'll lie down and ruminate. There's no better place than soft hay that's been freshly laid. It's soft, it's warm, and they have a great night's sleep. So that was number seven. It's great for bedding for your livestock. Which brings me on to point number nine which is mineral recycling. What I mean by mineral recycling is whatever the cows eat, the quality hay or the pasture, when, they, when their manure goes back onto the ground and their urine, it's adding that fertility back into the ground. It's cycling back into the ground. Not only is it good for the ground, you don't have to buy synthetic fertilizer, which we all know kills microbiology in your soil life. It actually feeds the microbiology in the soil life. So not only the nutrients leaching back into the ground, the worms, the dung beetles, they come up, carry it, ride it back into the ground and it fertilizes the ground, it feeds the microbiology and the plants. So if you have a look around here guys, this is purely for demonstration only. I put this grass out two days ago just for this reason. So I had this demonstration, like I said, we're not, we're continually grazing it here because I haven't got my electric fence systems up. So. What you generally do, like I said, is you'd bring them in, you'd have a graze it for a day or two, you leave a lot of carbon on the ground and move them off and they wouldn't come back. It would decay into the ground, 55 days rest, and they wouldn't be touched at the end. But purely this is for demonstration purposes only. In this area, it would have to be 20 meters long, which roughly works out to about 60 foot by about 10 meters across, so which is 30 foot. In this area alone, I come back and counted 37, lots of manure within this one area alone. Now that is liquid gold guys, that is going back, that is fertility going back into the ground, feeding that life. Also, recent studies have shown that you can put three times the amount of nitrogen back on the ground this way by, by rolling it out and bale grazing than you can as if you fed the animals in one localized area, collected the manure, piled it up, and then put it back out on the fields by a manure spreader down the track. They also mentioned that the contributing factor for the less potency is attributed to the leaching of the leaching of the manure. So it leaches in the ground where it's on the pile, so it's draining out of the pile, and also through volatilization as it escapes in gases, greenhouse gases. So it's heating up and it's losing it when it expels it as gas form. So number nine, I touched on it just a little bit there, is less greenhouse gas emissions. When they're around a bale feeder or a ring, you've got all your herd coming to that localized area and the manure is spread down, generally caked on one another. So it's gonna heat, break down. So you've got greenhouse gases. Worst is when you're either barn feeding them or you've got stored in a feedlot and you're piling that manure up into a massive pile and it's just heating and heating and the flumes of greenhouse gases are just coming off that manure then. Here when you bale feed and you spread that manure across the ground so it hasn't got a chance to heat up is that one paddy which cools down leaches into the ground and it's not constantly generating that heat and emitting greenhouse gases only for a short time. Mm. Yeah. Come on, girls.
which now brings me to the last one number 10 which is probably the most obvious it's food source for your livestock which is particularly handy in winter when your pastures are getting down you can roll out the hay and they've got a, a, a feed or a source of food for the last month or so of winter so it's August now it'll be September to start to warm up and I expect the pastures to lift so I've probably only got two or three bales to roll out so let's compare the 10 advantages of bale feeding on the ground compare that with feeding out of a hay rack similar to the two I've got beside me here there's only really three off that list that I can talk about and two are very con controversial I wouldn't even say they're an advantageous so the first one is seed so you've got the germination of seed this one that we built has got timber slats so the seeds fall through the slats and onto the ground underneath and whatever the cow drags out and doesn't chew then falls on the ground so you've got seeds on the ground but this hail feed bale feeder here would have to only be seven foot by i'd say four foot so it's very localized to this specific area that you're getting seed of germination and this is where the point of seeds get controversial as you can see yeah the seed can drop through there through those slots but if you have a look underneath it's also dying off because the sun isn't getting through there so what past your good past you had you're taking away because that sun can't penetrate through so the grass underneath can't sustain light this one's probably better and it's totally all dirt under there so if i go under there i don't know if you guys can see it but that is bare dirt that's nothing but dirt so yeah you get the seed fall through but what's the benefit of having seed if you're killing off the past you got anyway so the recovery of that ground once you've moved if you move those mineral feeders on a regular basis it has to recover that ground so you really need to put hay back on top of that bare dirt otherwise you're going to dry it out and it could be up to 12 months recovery so is it really beneficial the seeds that are on the ground where you've just destroyed the pasture so the second point I'll talk about when it comes to bale feeding out of a rack is fertility yes cows eat so yes you have got that manure back onto the ground but generally you find it's in a ring because they're all facing in they're eating out of it and it's concentrated in a ring around the bale feeders you get an over saturation of that manure cycle on the ground and if you go to any feedlot or any hay any farm that they don't move their racks the ground's dead and that's for two reasons the high concentration of minerals in that area is actually destroying the ground it's killing the plant it's too high it can't cope with all that urine and manure and secondly the cows are walking over it they've got to walk through that poo to get the feed and long term it turns to mud because it kills on the ground the constant impact on the ground you're really adding you're compressing that ground hard because now it's died the animal impact around it destroyed all the ground it's now turned to dirt it's drying out you've just got no soil life at all in the ground so that manure cycle i'm talking about is it really beneficial when you come out of a hay rack when it destroys the ground and kills the grass and you've got nothing but dirt so really there's only one left like i said two were controversial i spoke about the only really reason you use bale feeders and the only reason people do use them is to feed their livestock yes they're feeding the livestock it's cost you money to build these but you can also feed the livestock on the ground and you've got those 10 additional bonuses like i just mentioned when you do feed them on the ground so much of an advantageous and a bonus by doing that over a feed rack righto guys i think that's about it before i go I want to congratulate the winners of their last competition so the competition was when utter farm reached 500 subscribers on youtube i know there was two that was close there's one mid july and there's one mid august and it only hit 500 a few days ago we've been camping out here at the utter farm so i'm not sure of those names i'm pretty sure i know who they are though one's a family member and that's why i'm gonna pay second place as well with the exact same prize as the hat the stubby cooler and the key ring i'm pretty sure i know who it is but until i go home and confirm the name by the time this comes to air you would have been notified so congratulations to you both 
Also, I would like to announce the another competition. As part of Nicole's birthday present this year, I've shouted her to CMC down at Ipswich. Um, CMC Rocks, if you don't know, it's a country music festival in Ipswich near Willowbank. What the competition's going to be is we're going to take down three hats, out of farm hats, and three out of farm stubby coolers. The first people who come up to us, because myself and Nicole are obviously going to wear our other farm clothing, with the catchphrase, I love regenerative farming, and show us that on their phone that they're subscribers to the other farm channel, they get the choice of a hat or a stubby cooler. So we're taking three of each, so the first six people in get those prizes. Righto guys, I hope you have a great morning, a terrific afternoon, and an awesome evening guys, wherever you're watching this from, and we'll catch you later.